Welcome, welcome, welcome. In this session, we're going to be talking about how you can be blessed when you publicly acknowledge Yeshua, when you publicly acknowledge Jesus. We're, we're reading right now from Luke chapter 12, verses 8 through 12. Okay, so um, let's get right to this. This is Luke chapter 12, verse 8. I tell you, everyone who confesses me before men, the Son, the son of Man will also confess before the angels of God. But he who denies me in the presence of men will be denied in the presence of the angel of God's angels. Jesus takes it very personally how you treat him on this earth. Okay? Keep in mind that we're talking about the real Jesus here, not talking about the ever so nicey nice nice boy that a lot of the churches today uh, proclaim Jesus to be. We're we're talking about a Jesus who said, the world hates me because I testify that its deeds are evil. The world hates him. The real Jesus is hated by the world. Now we have a fake Jesus. Now we have what I would call a golden calf Jesus that is loved by the world. Why, is, why does the world love him? Well, because he's pro pro portrayed to be a... A Jesus who just excuses all sin, loves everybody, give everybody a hug, give everybody a kiss, just like a you know a hippie from the sixties, like just free love. That's not the Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus of the Bible caused people to be angry so often, many many times. He had to just take off because people were just too, too angry. They tried to kill him over and over and over again until they finally did. That's the real Jesus. Now, when you see, when you hear a preacher or, you know, especially someone on the street preaching, you say, oh, no, I, that's not showing the love of God. That's not showing the love of Jesus. Well, yeah, you can say the same thing about Jesus. You see how he preached? Calling people hypocrites, sons of Satan, sons of hell, brood of snakes, calling a woman a dog, all kinds of stuff. Okay. Uh, that's the real Jesus. That's the Jesus we got in all of our Bibles. I'm here to tell you what your pastor will not tell you. I'm here to tell you what your priest will not tell you. In that context and in that light, again, verse 8 says, I tell you, everyone who confesses me before men, the Son of Man, obviously speaking about himself, will also confess before the angels of God. Wouldn't you like to have Jesus himself call the angels of God and say, hey, look at this. Here's my brother. Here's my sister. Hey, I love this person. I like this guy. Jesus said, if you confess him before others, he will do that before the angels of God for you. But, it says in verse 9, But he who denies me in the presence of men will be denied in the presence of God's angels. That would be a very sad story. Do not deny Jesus. You don't want him to deny you before the angels of God. Verse 10, Everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But those who blaspheme against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Very tough words. And I've heard so many different explanations, you know, explaining this away, talking, sweet talking, you know, sugarcoating this. Let's look at it for what it really is. Um, Jesus said, if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, what does that mean? That means you speak against the Holy Spirit. You speak evil things against the Spirit of God. You say that he's, you know... <laughs> You just say evil things against the Spirit of God. You say bad things about Him. And a lot of times people do that unknowingly because they see something happening with somebody or, you know, uh, they don't understand the work of God in someone's life. So they say, oh, it's the work of the devil. Oh, you're, you know, you're just from the devil. Oh, that's, that's a kundalini spirit. Oh, that's the devil. 
or Satan has got a hold of you, you better be very careful to make sure, make double sure, triple sure, quadruple sure that it's not God himself because so many people mistake God because they don't know God. They they only know the God of modern day corrupt Christianity. Some people say, well, you know what, if if you're worried about it, I mean, because you got people say, well, I don't know if I if I blaspheme the Holy Spirit or not. Or or I did blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Would I be forgiven? Like right now, I've I've said the sinner's prayer. I've I believe in Jesus. I I went to church. I I I you know, all yada 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 yada. So we got a lot of pastors and preachers and, and people like that that say, well, if you're worried about it, that means that you haven't done it. Um, where does it say that in the scriptures? Well, if you're worried about it, and this and this is this is their logic. If you're worried about it, that must be the Holy Spirit convicting you. And if the Holy Spirit's convicting convicting you, that means that you still have the Holy Spirit. If you still have the Holy Spirit, that must be that mean that must mean that you didn't commit the unforgivable sin. Why would the Holy Spirit stick around and speak to you and convict you if you are part of the this crowd, the blaspheming the Holy Spirit crowd? makes sense to the uninformed, the uneducated. But just because you feel bad about it doesn't mean it's the Holy Spirit convicting you. Just because you feel bad about it doesn't mean that you didn't do it. Remember, Judas felt bad about what he did and he killed himself. A lot of people feel bad about what they do doesn't mean that it's the Holy Spirit really convicting them. It could be their conscience. It could be their own conscience convicting them. A lot of people don't even know who the Holy Spirit is. Holy Spirit, by the way, is not a feeling or a, just a power. The Holy Spirit's a person, the Spirit of God, a real person. Verse 11, when they bring you before the synagogues, the rulers and the authorities, notice Jesus said when, not if, when they bring you before the synagogues, the rulers and the authorities. Don't be anxious how you will answer or what you will say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that same hour what you must say. So here we go. Um, Jesus, again, is is coming back, basically coming full circle. We, We mentioned this a few sessions ago about not worrying. You know, God's got God's got you covered. God's in control. God's on the throne. Um, God cares. So don't worry. Don't be anxious. Um, when you when they bring you before synagogues, rulers, authorities, don't be anxious how you or, or uh, how or what you will answer or what you will say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that same hour what you will say. So you don't have to really prepare too much beforehand. You don't have to worry about it. God will give you the words. So that's it uh, for this session. There's a lot said, I know, in this session. And if you have any questions, don't uh, don't hesitate to uh, to ask. You know, uh, honest questions. Um, and uh, as you go your way, be blessed. May God enlighten the eyes of your understanding and give you humility uh, to admit, you know, uh, things that you need to admit, to hear the things you need to hear instead of try to justify it. And so as you go your way, God bless you and always keep the word of God in your mind. In the name of Jesus, thank you.